Hey y'all. What's up y'all? I'm Elise. And I'm Will. And this is Team Tatum. Team Tatum. Today we're reviewing another movie from our 1001 movies you must die before you watch. I think I said Ooh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say I think I said it right. <laughs> Uh, keep that in <laughs> today we're reviewing another one of the 1001 movies you must watch before you die today's movie is 1960's peeping tom Wait. <laughs> so this is a british movie and well it says uk i don't know if there's a I know there's a difference, but we don't know where they actually were. <laughs> so yeah. it might not have been Britain, but it was definitely in the UK. Yeah, it definitely said it was a UK movie. But anyway, uh, this was called the European equivalent to Psycho, which came out the same year. Psycho came out later in the year. This came out in the spring, I want to say, earlier in the year. But. It did not get the same notoriety as Psycho got because it got pulled from the theaters. But we'll get to that in the trivia part. But anyway, this movie is basically about, as you guessed it, a peeping Tom. With their food name Mark. Yeah. Missed opportunity. <laughs> anyway, his name is Mark and he is a serial killer. We don't know that when we're watching the movie. We knew it was a horror movie because this is horror month. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. So, mostly in October, yeah. we watch horror movies. Horror adjacent movies, whatever. Uh, so, we knew the premise was going to be that, but didn't know exactly what it was going to be. Anyway, Mark's a serial killer. So, this is one of the earlier slasher films. Not the first, but up there in like the first little bunch one of the founders yeah laid the foundation Forefathers, whatever those words are <laughs> <laughs> uh so quick synopsis is he's a peeping tom he finds people to peep on he's like i'm gonna murder you he murders them that's the movie essentially now to get into spoilers those are graphics. Anywho, so the movie starts off <laughs> with a unfortunate first person view with a crosshair. So think first person, but with a crosshair in the middle of the screen. So I immediately was like, oh no, not, be not this. Not going to be this movie. <laughs> no, I just. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is going to be, the movie's going to be. I'm not going to like this movie. Immediately, it reminded me of this movie with Elijah Wood. Yeah, I had to think of it. Elijah Wood, a.k.a. Frodo, where we lasted about 10 minutes, and then we turned it off. It's called Maniac, and coincidentally, it was one October fest of movie watching that we were doing a couple years ago, and it's first person, and it's... You know, you just see Elijah Wood's character in the very beginning looking into like a, I think it was a, a medicine mirror. cabinet yeah. mirror or whatever. And then from that point on, once he walks away from the mirror, it's first person. And you see him like stalking this woman, but it looks super weird. It's like not even weird, it's stupid. Because it looked like a camera person holding a camera, peeking in and out, like behind some trash cans or whatever, instead of someone's view. Like it was, it was just weird and I didn't like it. And we were just like, let's turn this off. Mm. Uh, so I thought that's what this movie was going to be. Anyway, you see him filming. And this is like 1960. So it was like the old school. Well, it was modern. Probably modern super then. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> then, but for us, old school camera, you can hear it doing a little whirring. All the gears and stuff turning. It's in a bag. Uh, and so you're like, okay, that's fine from that perspective. So he sees this woman across the street. He goes across the street. And I'm like, I hope he's not supposed to be sneaking up sneaking, on her. Sneaking. Because 
big camcorder yeah. in his hand, essentially. It was 1960. <laughs> Cameras were not small. There was no, like, what camera going on? But she turns around, is unfazed by him, and she's just like... She says... So I forget exactly what she says, but essentially she's a lady of the night. Mm-hmm. And... Ask, you know, tells him what the price is. I didn't come all the way down here for nothing. Now give me my $500. You give me $10. And, you know, he basically nods his head because we don't hear him talk, I don't think. Mm-mm. And then she just starts walking. No questions asked. No, like, you want to do this back at my place, your place, your car, in the alley. Just, we're walking. She uh, all that set up. Mm-hmm. So she walks uh, across the street to this building, goes in the building, passes a lady in the staircase, which I assume to be like the madam or whatever. And she looks at the guy weird because why wouldn't you? He's holding a camera. Someone needs to acknowledge this camera that he clearly is holding. But old girl is just like, whatever, as long as I get paid. And takes him upstairs, gets to the bed, starts undressing he starts like zooming in closer to her she's unfazed but then all of a sudden she starts freaking out and it's clearly something's happening she's like what are you doing yeah no don't do that but she wasn't saying it loud yeah she was just like just them could hear and i was like scream help stop some like something like whatever's happening to you you 100 percent deserve it because you are not trying to help yourself whatsoever yeah something and it cuts away and you know you allude to the fact that he murdered her or whatever right i think she does scream when she's being killed yeah right at the end like right before the cut she does scream but i was like it's too late nobody cares uh yeah so, you know, it's 1960, so they're not going to show the death. And I was cool with that, you know. It's, it's crazy enough that they're showing murder on film. They're not going to actually show it. But just talking about it was, you know, was crazy back then. So, the next scene is the crime scene. Like, either the next day. Yeah, it's the next day. And guess who's filming the cops combing the area? Mark. all just nonchalant and one of the cops has the bright idea to be like hey you what are you doing and he's like oh just filming yeah and he he, was not trying to come in he was like just 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 recording he was just (laughs) yeah and the cop is just like where were you last night and he was like oh i was here he was like what you were you here at 9 30 and he was like sure was what were you doing filming all right, get out of here. And it was like, sir, you're terrible at your job. This guy just admitted Put to being in the area at the time. And you were just like, get out of here, weirdo. We're trying to do our job. Are you? Like, that doesn't make him guilty just because he was there at that time. But he still, person of, interest. person of interest. Yeah, get some clues. And we don't know how he killed her, but we know from the cops, like, overhearing them, while Mark is just casually filming and taking photos. No, I don't think he was, I think he was just taking photos. He, he didn't have his camera out. Mm-hmm. Either way, he was there looking super weird. Uh, the cops reveal that her face is disfigured. Like, they've never seen, they don't know. Like, it was pure terror on her face when she died or whatever. And they're like, you know, we've never seen this. So, we assume this is Mark's first kill. Or whatever, right? This is the beginning to his serial killer spree. Spree. So after the cop like shoes him away, he goes back. He goes back to the crib, and <laughs> as he goes back to the crib, he stops at a window on the first. Like it's a multiple story building. It's like a big house. It's not a building. It's like a huge house. And there's a party going on, and he this fool just looking in the window. Watching like, the party like he's supposed to be doing it or something. <laughs> yeah. Not not sneaking, just like <laughs> all in the window and then people start to notice him and they're like, What is this fool doing? Look now, but it's some creep watching yeah. us through the window. <laughs> it was some girl's uh twenty first birthday they were celebrating. Allegedly. Yeah, she was clearly <laughs> thirty five. <laughs> Older than twenty. <laughs> But uh, instead of being like, eek, 
she's like, I'm going to go invite him. Why would you invite him? She recognized him. She was like, oh, that's the man that lives upstairs. And Don't care. Like, uh, so? <laughs> right. He's staring at your window like a weirdo. Why would you invite that dude? Uh, I, don't, I don't care who that man was. But she, he, when she goes out, he's like coming into the building. And then going to act like he wasn't looking at her. She was like, hey. And he was like, oh, who, me? Was like, mm-hmm. Yes, you, Mark. And she invites him to the party, and he's like, nah, you know, I'm good or whatever, and, like, goes on upstairs. And then he starts watching his his film of his murder or whatever. Turns out he gets his jollies off watching the, you know, the murders. Yeah, jollies, jollies, like, literal jollies, like, oh, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, and there's a knock at the door. It's old girl. It's a birthday girl. She brings him a slice of cake. And basically at this point, her and Mark go together. Because Mark... Immediately. immediately. (laughs) Because Mark is like, a woman? (laughs) Knocking at my door. Drop me cake? Uh, So they talk. And he tells her like all about his filming and stuff. Again, not trying to hide nothing. He's got a special room in his apartment. Or whatever. And he tells her that he's the landlord. I forgot how that comes up. And she's like, really? And I was like, how do you live and not know your landlord? Like, okay, you're not friends with him, but you know who you're paying your money to. Or whatever. But apparently they've just been sliding money into a box or something, and he just been collecting it. She was saying that she was worried about their rent going up. And he was like, oh, you don't have to worry about your rent going up. She was like, how do you know? You know the landlord? He was like, I'm the landlord. Yeah, that's what it was. She was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, so it turns out his father used to own the house. It's a like I said, it's a big house with multiple rooms. One of those, you know, I can lease out these other rooms type of houses. Uh, and so he's you know stays there, and that's how he pays for it. Is you know still renting it out and all of that. Uh, so anyway, he shows her his films, and one of the films he well the film he shows her is of his dad filming him as a kid and this is what sets her off that's what's weird like not the fact that he was staring in the window or that he has like all the other weird things in his apartment the fact that his dad was filming him like sleep eating cereal playing outside whatever his dad filmed it was basically reality tv before reality tv she Turn like, it off. She's like, I don't want to see this. This yeah, is too like, sad or something like that. I was like, what's wrong with you? Uh, so he's like, right. Mark's like, I, don't know. I thought it was cool. <laughs> <You guys>. uh, <laughs> so move on. Mark goes to work and he's like taking photos of this, this actress. She's doing like these pinup model type poses or whatever. They're doing promotions for a movie. And he's taking photos of her. And then there's a woman, like, at a window. Just, like, looking out the yeah, window. Yeah, looking out the window. Time. And you can only see the left side of her face. And so you only see the left side of her face, and she's smoking or whatever. And when he gets done with the first pinup girl, he's like, you know, it's your turn now. And she turns, and she's got this, like, cleft on her right side mm-hmm. that you now see that she's turned, like, towards the camera. But they made it, like, super dramatic. When she yeah. Turns, like, zoomed in on it and stuff. Like, it's not... <laughs> What? Serious? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Mark loses his mind, and he was taking photos. He puts the camera down and gets his video camera, the same one he was using when he murdered old girl. And he's like, "I must, I must I capture must you." And yes, yes. <laughs> at first, old girl was looking like, "You gonna say something about my cleft, ain't you?" When she, she had an attitude when she turned around. Uh, like she was ready to be offended, but then she was seemed more offended that he was being weird, yeah, which is he was into it. the proper response because he was super into it. Uh, and like that scene went on for a very awkward amount of time. Yeah. Uh, then it goes back to the first pinup girl or whatever, and long story short, short <laughs> he murders her. Same deal where he's taking a video. That was later though. That's later. Right yeah. Not right now. Yeah. Okay, my bad. So. It was- those two women and another man in the room. He wasn't going to kill in front of everybody. Well, no, not right then, right then. I thought it was like it was, the next scene. Mm-mm. No? Okay. My bad. Uh, so, 
he's filming other or, or taking photos. He's like the photo guy at the studio or whatever. Like he works at a movie studio. He works at a movie studio, so he's taking still photos of like stuff in action as they're filming, whatever. Uh, he's working with continuity and stuff too. Yeah. And so does he kill her before or after the radio girl? Yeah. The pinup the woman. woman. After. After her? She was like the last person. No, I thought those radio girls were. No. no. He was like the second person. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so this is this is uh there's this other chick that works there, right? And he winds up doing something with her after hours. Like, they're not supposed to be there. And they're sneaking, recording some stuff. Like, she's uh, performing for him while he, he records. And, again, my man is not trying to hide it. He doesn't turn the, you know, quiet on set light on. So people know someone's in there if they were to look at the light. Like, he's not, I don't know, he wants to get caught. Uh, so she's doing her little dance number and he records her and then you find out how he murders people so as he's recording he he has a tripod like he's recording with it on a tripod he lifts the one of the legs up like straight out like yeah like straight out and removes the little rubber footy on it to keep it stable when it's on the ground and then slide like unscrews it and slides out this blade like a knife blade and so he's walking towards her still filming pointing this blade at her and she gets stabbed because she doesn't move out the way <laughs> and there's a mirror up on the camera too yeah you find out that's why they're screaming because they can see themselves getting murdered murdered yeah like that. but she had plenty of room to run but she backed up all of like seven steps mm-hmm. and you know gets murdered whatever uh, so nobody feels sorry for her. <laughs> and scenes go on. He kills the pinup girl. Right? Yeah. yeah. Kills the pinup girl. Same deal where everything's all cool till he pulls out that, that blade. He killed her from frustration because of killing the radio girl. We're calling her radio girl because she was dancing to music to a, from yeah, radio. From a radio the woman in the studio but he killed her in the movie studio and then just hid her body in a footlocker that they had on set of the movie that they were filming so the police came well the next day they had a scene and that footlocker was incorporated in the scene unbeknownst to him and so the woman opened it up the actor for that movie opened it up saw the dead woman in there freaked out police came they were investigating all this kind of stuff and he was pretty much cooperating with the cops like telling them all kind of stuff and they still were not putting two and two together not at all he was the culprit uh there was even when she fell in the radio fell in with her and i think it was recording audio or something because he was nervous that it was in there i can't remember why and he didn't know that it was in there and so he did something to sidetrack them so that they wouldn't look under her body. But anywho, he, they were getting close to him, basically. He was frustrated, so he called the pinup lady and was like, I got to work with you today. I got an idea, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, all right, more money for me. <laughs> and so then he had this whole scene set up. He did take her photos like it was an actual photo shoot. And then he murdered her. <laughs> and she was like, all right, man. <laughs> Let's get for some money. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you're greedy. Now I'm dead. What did I do? Yeah. Uh, so, also while this is going on, like I said, him and the birthday girl are getting close. She keeps coming back and hanging out with him oh, for whatever he reason. Not- Pursuing her, she is pursuing him. Yeah, like why? But whatever. So they going out on dates and all of that. Uh, the she has a mom. She lives with her mom, who until a certain part of the movie that I'm about to get to, I thought she was just drunk. Turns out she's blind. <laughs> she, 
Because she was always drinking. Like, I even said that she was blind. He was like, she's not blind. She just drunk. <laughs> yeah, because she would look at stuff. She looked not, towards stuff. Not how a blind person would look at, at something. Like, I'm, I understand blind people still look towards the sound. Even though they can't see it, it's just like natural reaction. But she was looking, looking at stuff. Uh, but you just see her sitting there on the couch drinking. Like, even at the party earlier, you saw this woman who you didn't know was a mother at the time. You know, just sitting there taking shots of whiskey or whatever. Uh, so, you know, the mom is like, I want to meet this guy or whatever, and yada, yada, yada. And one night, uh, Mark comes home. That's after the date. It's yes, after the date. Mark comes home and goes to his little you know, fo- photo room where he watches his videos on the projector and the mom is in there just standing in the dark and he's like, what are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, and she's like, I always come up to this room at night or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, do you mean that metaphorically? Yeah, you just be breaking into or you just being actually in his room in this apartment? Uh, that never gets answered. Right. But he he puts on the video and basically she was like you that man has been killing everybody ain't you and blah 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 like telling him that she knows what's going on he was like oh well maybe you want to hear this then since you're so inquisitive <laughs> he puts on the video and you can hear like she's blind but you can hear that somebody's being murdered so. yeah so again he's just like nonchalant about his murderous activities and proceeds to do the whole routine of coming towards her with the blade, but ultimately stops because she can't see the blade coming, and therefore it doesn't have that look of fear on, on her face. So he like stops or whatever. Like he's inches away from her, and he's like, "Man, you know, fun," and lets her go. And I think he walks her back to her yeah, she, apartment. She said something like she wanted to go or something like that he was like you sure like <laughs> she don't want me to <laughs> she don't want me to get murdered and then he's like all right and so he walked her all the way back down to her apartment to her door and she trying to say slick stuff like basically i know what you're doing like i literally just I, basically I told gave you, you evidence <laughs> i know you know and i'm still gonna date your daughter <laughs> <laughs> uh so finally the the police finally put two and two together and they come you know to his apartment or to his house and old girl birthday girl is there and you know you hear the sirens outside they're talking on a little uh megaphone thing like come out with your hands up or we're coming in and she's like mark mark what's going on he's like i always knew this day would come i prepared for it but by this time she also knew because she started playing one of the films. Yeah, and being nosy. She was like, Mark, what is this? What's happening? Yeah, and then it showed the person getting murdered. My murder like, films. You. And she was trying to get yes. out. And he was like, don't show me that you're scared. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to kill you too. <laughs> he was like, I don't want to kill you because you found out. I'm going to want to kill you because I like the look yeah. of fear on your face. So, so yeah, please don't be scared. <laughs> Yeah, he turned away. He was like, please, don't show me your scared face. And I was like, you got some issues. <laughs> uh, also, I think Mark was autistic. I think he was the first autistic serial killer. That's he, why he was so open, not trying to really cover it up for real. Yeah, because autistic people don't get social cues, typically, not all of them. I'm not as expert on autistic people. I just watched a typical picked up a few things so don't add me but i was like i'm for this autistic serial killer never been done before all for it uh so anyway the you know he's trying to deal with not killing her because he likes her or whatever the cops are closing in but turns out he has this master plan if the cops ever caught him which should have been super early with how (laughs) nonchalant he is and how he helpful one person in this movie yeah before the one person <laughs> uh he sets up all these cameras like he has all these like cameras just around the apartment he starts setting them off They're and then set on, like a timer yeah 
and then he sets up his murder tripod on this wall like he has a whole hookup where he can mount it to the wall and he sticks up the blade and he starts walking towards it himself and he has the mirror up so he yeah can he can himself. see his face and he's like uh, it's uh, and you know murders himself suicide and old girl is still there watching it all why she ain't ran away i don't know but the cops come in right as he murders himself and she's you know like uh, and then that's the end of the movie yeah it was wild i liked it yeah good movie <laughs> uh like it wasn't a gory horror movie it wasn't you know, suspenseful because there was no suspense. My man was really not trying. He was, <laughs> he was he was a thug about his. He was like, if I get caught, I get caught. Whatever. Uh, I like I liked his. He stuck to the plan. He was a man of his. Word. He was a man of his word. Mark was Mark was a real killer out here. About he that life. he was super about that life, and I appreciated every minute of it. And I was like, hey, all those women you murdered. 100% deserved to get murdered. Didn't fight back. Didn't call for help. Didn't run away. Nothing. They just stood there and took it. And I was like, you deserve that, that video. Good job, Mark. But yeah, no one really at the time got to know about this movie. Because like I said, it didn't get the same notoriety that Psycho got. Because apparently for UK theater, this was too scary. And so, in addition to that, the director of this movie got run out of the film business because of this movie, because he had a cameo. So, remember when we were talking about he was showing the birthday girl? I don't remember nobody's name, so I just give people names, sorry. Uh, except for Mark. I feel like it was Sarah, but I could be very wrong. <laughs> Uh, so when he was showing her like the little home videos his dad used to take and one, and part of the video his dad comes into frame with with him his daddy was a scientist too by yeah the his way, dad was so. a scientist he was a scientific experiment he, he didn't really like for filming science yeah he was doing a you know experiment whatever but the ca- the his dad was the director so it was a cameo and the little boy in the video was the director's actual son. Mm-hmm. So people in 1960 were like, this hits too close to home. You did this to your son for real. You're a monster. Your son is actually probably doing this himself and ran with it. Mm-hmm. And that man's career got tanked because right. people were like, take this filth out of the movie theater. And so basically it only lasted like a couple of weeks mm-hmm. and then got thrown out so psycho went on later that year to come out and then stay in theaters forever so people remember psycho nobody talks about peeping tom i ain't know about it uh but one i'm american and yeah that's pretty much it uh <laughs> to refer to number one <laughs> yeah but but yeah that's the the story of peeping tom also tidbit of information the phrase Peeping Tom, or turn Peeping Tom, came from uh, there's a little boy who witnessed Lady Godiva, which I didn't know was a real person. I knew the name. I didn't know nothing about it. I still don't know nothing about it. But apparently she was an important figure back in, back, back, back in the day. And she came, one of the times she came into town, she came into town on a horse, naked. Why? I don't know. But they were told not to look at her because she was too beautiful and it was you know they weren't worthy basically and so everyone would bow their heads and you know avoid eye contact but there was a little boy named tom who was like i'm gonna look and according to legend either got stricken blind from looking at her or they later killed him for being disobedient i learned that going through my imdb trivia as i do after watching every movie. But, uh. Time for ratings. Time for ratings. What would you rate this? I liked it. <laughs> and I'm gonna rate this movie. I'm gonna rate this movie a. Three and a half out of five. Three and a half what? Out of five. Three and a half cowboy Yee-hoo! ninja 
out of five. Thank y'all. I too will rate this three and a half Cowboy Ninjas out of five. It wasn't scary, but it was good. It was good. Like it was, I mean entertaining. It was entertaining. My my horror doesn't always have to be scary. Sometimes I just want good old fashioned murder. But in between the murders I have to be entertained. Like spoiler alert, I don't like the movie Hostile because it's just murder. It's just gore. Like it's super gory. And it's some crazy murders, and I will give it that. But just give me a highlight reel. Like, I'll just take a YouTube, all the kills in Hostel, then actually watching Hostel again. So, this movie kept it up for me as far as entertainment value outside of the murders. So, three and a half out of five, which is an average of. Three and a half, Cowboy Ninjas out of five. Hmm. And I also. <laughs> feel that way about Terrifier. I'm looking at you, Esteban. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to watch Terrifier 2 just to talk bad about it to you. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. It's a garbage. Shots fired. I ain't even seen it yet and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our review of Peeping Tom. So if you've seen Peeping Tom... Write down in the comments what you thought about it. If you haven't, go check it out. You can watch it on Tubi for free. And uh, like, share, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. And as always, you have just watched Team Tatum. Meow.